So I don't even know that I want to do the hard intro here. We can get to the intro, but like when you do the like, guys, what's going on? Welcome, like my big people go like. I can see. Hi. <laughs> what's up? Follow me on uh, the Insta Face. Subscribe and smash up the like button. <laughs> I've got to do the intro. I've got to do the hard intro. I was trying to avoid it. I've got to do the hard intro. So let me, <laughs> guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath and I'm joined by my pal, Lisa Downs, filmmaker extraordinaire. Lisa, what's going on with you? Extraordinaire is a wonderful world and I take it. So we were talking, uh, as we do, we were just, we were just you know, kind of chilling out talking. And one of the questions that comes up for me a lot is like, how do you start a YouTube channel? And you were like, well, I get, get, you get a similar question. What's yeah. the question you get? Like, how do I, I want to do a documentary. I'm thinking about doing a documentary. Like, what do I do? And so I've had a few Skype calls with people too, to try and help them and guide them, I guess. Um, you know, a lot of it's kind of finding your feet, but there are some key things that I always try and say to people. So we thought it was a very fitting show to be almost like a how-to. <laughs> yeah, just the soft conversational, like, Hey, just, to, just like just chatting with friends about how to get stuff started. And you know, you know who else has asked you that question? I asked you that question. I was like, <laughs> I want to do this. What would I do? And you were like, well, and you had great advice. So let's start with you because you are the director of Life After Flash, Life After the Navigator. Where can people find these? <gasps> well, that's funny you ask that because if they go to lifeaftermovies.com, um, they can get the region free blu-rays and the pre-orders for life after a tray you are up as well hold up hold up you're telling me anywhere in the world this is region free i don't have to worry about a special player <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to worry about a player and it ships worldwide you still got it you got any patches left oh yes and you also it comes with a limited edition collector's patch sweet they're awesome um, by me as well <laughs> that's right i forgot about that yeah you did a great job um so okay let's start with you how would you you've you've how did you start let's i'm curious how you started with flash was flash your first project or did you do something before that flash was my first feature documentary so i had done a course of tv production at university um which kind of led me on the wrong track that I really wanted to always do film, but in Australia, there wasn't a film course. So I ended up doing TV. Um, so then that kind of took me working in television, which I didn't really enjoy, like as in like production company doing, you know, TV shows and trying to develop TV. And it just wasn't me at all. Um, so Flash was my first feature documentary. So it really was the first time that I had done something as, a single entity trying to get something off the ground. I'd done a scripted film with a couple of friends. So that was a good introduction to scripted because we just didn't know what we were doing. Um, but this was first proper, you know, documentary, which then ultimately led to having to edit it myself and producing it myself and finding the interviews and finding the money and all those things that come with indie film. Did you know at that point that you would be doing all those things by yourself or was it a surprise? That was very much a surprise. So I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I wish I had known going into it is knowing how much you actually really have to do on your own. I went into it thinking I would raise the full amount of money on crowdfunding, Kickstarter, had to cancel it, start again, do a much, much lower, like a 25th of what I originally had tried to raise. Um, I wish I had known that there's a good chance that I will only raise a very small amount of what I need um, and to anticipate pulling in lots of favors from people. Put, like people were sending me hard drives, people were like offering for me to sleep on the couch. You re really have to like live and breathe everything. And then even then I thought, oh, I'll have an editor. Like I'll be able to bring in more money and find an editor. And the only reason I edited it was because I, couldn't afford an editor and I couldn't find one and so you really have to anticipate either pulling in a lot of favors or doing as much as you can on your own because chances are you won't have a budget for it um, the second biggest thing that I learned is make something before you even shoot anything know where you want it to go 
So what is your end goal? Do you want it to be in festivals? Do you want it to be on TV? Do you want it to just be on YouTube? All these things, each end goal determines what kind of kit you need or how much money you need or how many, how much legal you have to do to get it, you know, solid if you're going to fair use things and things like that. So that would be my two straight out the gate. Assume you're going to be doing it all on your own or as much as like mm -hmm. very much multitasking. Assume <laughs> you're going to have to do it with a very low budget, which also in a way helps you be really creative. I think it makes mm -hmm. you think outside the box and do things you probably wouldn't have done originally. So I don't think that's always a negative, but then know what your end goal is um, to what you're going to do. I hear that a lot about the, well, first of all, the upside of what you're talking about is that you've now, you develop these skills out of necessity. You know, you may not set out to be an editor, but then you become an editor. And at this point, you know, you're working on, you, you've, you're working on other things. You've got the Atreyu project. You've got something else. That, well, it's been announced. But you've got Life After Goodfellas coming. Life After Goodfellas. Yes. Which is really you, Could you imagine turning that editing over to somebody else at this point? No. Would you want to? Right. Yeah. I, it might, it might get to a point where I have to, um, if we can scale it as much as we want to scale it. Um, but it's funny because it, I was actually thinking that same thing the other day, funny you mentioned it, is because I really struggled with Flash, trying to work out the narrative really for it. So I ended up, you know, putting all the themes on cue cards and having it all laid out and moving things around to try and work. But it was really hard to see how a 90 minute film flowed. Um, and then with Navigator, I actually started trying to find a second editor who then originally did, he had all the footage, he had the drives, he was gonna be the editor. And it just, my gut feeling was like, it's just not working. So I took it back off and finished it. So I didn't even anticipate editing Navigator. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's like, I just, I'm, I know what I want and, I feel like it's really me, the whole thing, and it's not going to be perfect. It's another good lesson. Um, but, you know, you kind of, you can watch back on things and know what you went through to make it, and you can um, appreciate the imperfections. So I think it's actually really good for people to start a project anticipating that they can acquire all these amazing skills or hone skills if they mm -hmm. can already do it. It's a, it's a great learning experience. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, you film is a collaborative effort, but the documentary side of things is often such a singular point of view. And because you're there from the conception to the filming to the editing to the, the distribution, I mean, even even with these two guys right here, I mean, those are so closely distributed by you. You know, they're coming. You'll sign them if you want, if they if people want them to. It's so much a film by Lisa Downs, you know, yeah. it's not a film by Lisa Downs with involvement from Frank, you know, whatever. But um, that is so that's the plus and the, and the minus. Right. It's a dual side of the coin. You're, you're going to work harder than you ever thought you were going to work on something. But at the end yeah. of the day, you've got something that really reflects what you did. Yeah. And uh, do but you the, go ahead? Oh, I was going to say one of the great things about kind of where we are at the moment with technology is someone can like if you just want to do a film that is going to be in festivals I mean you have iPhones the new iPhones now shoot 4k and look amazing mm -hmm. you know audio you'd still have to look at but the ability to shoot even if you just have a phone and the ability to edit on if you I mean I'm a Mac person mm -hmm. um me too but they just you have so much access to technology that you don't have to do any kind of degree to decide that you want to be creative whether it's to make a documentary or to start a youtube channel or whatever there's so many there's so many things that are accessible and there's enough people doing it that you can just do research depending on what type of thing you want to do and look how other people who are doing similar things and see what they use and how they do it and how many people are in the crew as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good what about a YouTube channel? How would, I mean, I guess there's similar 
similar creative things is probably, you know, you don't need to look at having as big a budget unless you want to really start marketing or. Yes. I, most of what you said, I think actually applies to YouTube because you're, first of all, what is your goal? You have to identify what the goal is of your channel. If it's just a hobby, um, if you just want to talk about what you picked up or, you know, like, Hey, I really love, you know, I really love chewing gum. So I'm going to dedicate a channel, you know, then that's a different goal than if you want to be um you know someone who's quote unquote influencer which is I, I mean I see a lot of people that don't realize the work that is involved in the other side of that like if you really want to become um uh a more visible see here's the thing this is the dirty secret about YouTube is that pe the burnout rate is huge and the Work involved is huge. And a lot of people say like, well, I'm just doing it for me, right? I just want to reflect my interest. But then when only 10 people watch their videos, they very quickly, quickly get discouraged and then they quit. Um, so I always say, you know, identify what your goal is and then identify what you've got to get you to that goal. You need to set a plan. So if your goal is to talk about your hobbies, set yourself a goal of how often you're going to do that. Um, how long the videos are going to be, how much editing you're going to put into the videos and however much editing you think you're going to put into it, double it or triple it because it's going to be so much more than you think it's going to be. Um, every video that hits this channel has a minimum of about three hours in it and sometimes upwards to 10. And I've done more than that, but then you realize like I'm giving this away. Now we're Patreon supported and we do get a little bit of Google AdSense for the, I mean, it's very small. It's really when you see what YouTube takes, like what Google takes and then what they give the creators, like it's like, ooh. Um, but you, it's not a great idea to put too much time into something that you're giving away and that you won't get back. So does that make sense? Um, so identify your goal, figure out how you're going to get there. And then the most important thing is to find your voice, right? What are you saying that nobody else is saying? And how are you saying it? in a way that's different than anybody else. And I see a lot of characters on YouTube, which I hate to be, I mean, honestly, I just do not like that. Whatever your voice is, find it, turn it up a little bit. I think there are a lot of parallels between doing indie documentaries and starting like a yeah. YouTube channel. I feel like for both, never do a subject that you don't live and breathe mm -hmm. because you have to put so much time into it and you have to do it assuming you're not going to be making any money at all because yeah. it is really really hard to monetize anything but it's good to build what you have from the beginning and it you know it involves um you know you might do start like the direction a documentary might take or a channel might take it might change halfway because you can kind of see it objectively and you know new things will come up but um you have to do it like you just have to be following your gut and following your voice like you say um assuming it's not going to make any money um but build a solid brand so then it has potential and it gives it the best possible grounding to make money from it in the future but i always feel like you should be i would do this even if you know it I knew it would never ever make any money because I just enjoy doing it so much. So, That's and also YouTube, you could almost combine the two. If you wanted to do documentaries or short films or anything, you could use YouTube as a way to practice and put content up and see how people react and see their opinion of it. And then, then you also are building a solid foundation for an audience. And that's part of the reason why I started the web show is to have something that people could go to when they're not waiting three years for the film to be finished. So there's a way that you can cleverly use both mediums, I think. Yeah, it's a great tool. YouTube is a great tool and I'm using it as a tool too. Like Serial at Midnight is a YouTube channel, but it's also a website. The website predates the YouTube channel and the YouTube channel is not the last stop for Serial at Midnight. There are other things that are down the road. Uh, it's a good tool for connecting with your audience and for building your voice, finding your voice and getting it out there. Um, but yeah, as you said, it, you have to love it. Whatever you're talking about, whatever you're doing, you have to love it so much that you'd be doing it whether or not you're, you know, focused. I'd be having these conversations anyway. The stuff I talk about, I'd be doing it anyway. 
I'm going to reference C. Courtney Joyner, who was just here in a couple, a couple of weeks ago, he and I did a video and he said that he said he talks to so many filmmakers and they just get so burned out. And he's like, if you don't have an absolute passion, if you're not living and breathing this stuff, it's going to be such a slog for you. And I see yeah. these people that are starting up channels. And again, with the character thing where they're like, Hey, what's going on everybody. And it's like, Ooh. So I recently, we watched that, um, the Netflix documentary about Jim Carrey doing the Andy Kaufman character for mm -hmm. man, Jim and Andy. Yeah. And he that was says funny. in that documentary, and this is so true. And it applies to everything entertainment wise. He says, um, I don't think exactly how he says it. He says at some point over the, the work, if you're doing a character, you're going to get tired of that character and you can either hold on to this thing that you never were, or you're going to fall into your, you're going to fall into your grave pretending to be this thing that you never were, or it's just going to fall away and you'll be yourself. And that's so true. Cause when I, I look back at early serial at midnight videos, I was never a character, but I would just kind of, I'd, I'd be like, Hey, so today uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And there was no personality. There was no like whatever. And then I started to build it and be like, okay, first of all, I need to you say, find the feet, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. say hello to people find you know what it is that start a video with a smile you know hey it's it's not as common as you would think it is but start your video with a smile um and just like project what you want to see but don't be fake about it because if you as you and i have talked about off camera like that like guys what's going on welcome to cereal at midnight like i'm so tired of it right and so yeah the me comes through that I'm kind of grumpy. I'm kind of, I'm super introverted. And that comes through, to, it's starting to come through too. Um, you can't fake it. It will eventually, whatever you are is eventually going to come through in whatever you're doing. So just be yourself from the beginning. And people will connect with people who are honest. Yeah. You know, people, the audience will tire of a facade just as quickly as you'll tire of, trying to keep it up mm -hmm. that's true i mean i think that's true and then i see these channels that have like three million subscribers and i'm like that yeah. guy's not even using his real name he's like angry bob you know <laughs> so i don't yeah. know but most of the time yeah um i guess the only thing that i want to say just in in summary and in conclusion is that the next step after you find these things is to just get started just go start doing yeah. it because if you're waiting for this light to open up and shine down from the sky it's not going to happen and if you're waiting for this, you know, burst of inspiration that's going to lay out a plan ahead of you, that's probably not going to happen either. You just have to get dirty. You have to go do it and figure it out. And I think that probably yeah. applies for you too. Exactly. And if, and if you have an idea of what you want to do that you don't instantly start researching and start looking at how you can do it and, you know, reading up as much as you can or however, then it's, and if you keep making excuses, even if they're little excuses for maybe you'll do something about it tomorrow, or then it's not the right idea or approach. And so you need to kind of reset and then find that thing that you can be so excited about because then other people will be excited about it. Yeah. But it's it, hard. <laughs> it is hard. And, and that's, I think it's probably my biggest takeaway for this conversation is like, it's fun, but it's hard. I've never worked harder I, you know, I've been in the job market for oh, like 30 years. Like I've never worked harder than I've worked at Serial at Midnight. And I'm sure the same is true for you. Yes. yes, because you have to anticipate, like we have to make livings unless, you know, I would love to be an heiress, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> you have to make a living. And so you have to assume that you're going to be working whatever job you have to bring in the money to live and then be doing this weekends, evenings, spare time, however you can do it. Then if you can find ways to bring in a small amount of income that you can help, maybe you can reduce your, this is assuming you wanna do YouTube or documentaries for a living um, to, to subsidize your income with something that then you can reduce the amount of hours you do your day-to-day -day job and then you can put in more for your passion. But it's definitely very rewarding, um, but, just knowing how much work it's going to take and then loving that idea or direction enough that you know that you can put in the effort yeah and then it goes all it all goes back to the question do you love it do you love what yeah. you it, does that sound fun to you for some yeah. people it does and for others they're like i you know maybe if you're like maybe 
yeah. this might not be the thing for you, you know, it, yeah. you I, have the passion. I subscribe to that masterclass series, which I think is actually, I mean, it's expensive, but I think they do like two for one offers or something so people can share it with a friend. Um, and it's actually really interesting. And I watched the Scorsese one um, and he pretty much starts his series by saying, if you want to do something, then it's probably not for you. But if you have to do something, then you absolutely should be doing it, which I thought was quite good. We should let Scorsese have the last word. That's a good place to leave. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you were here in person, I'm like, hey, Marty. I just, I just feel like I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tell people what's going on. So what's going on with you? Where, what's, uh, you got a lot going on. Bring people up to so, speed. So it's, I mean, it's exciting. It's like now lockdown, the pandemic was tough um, as it was for most people. Um, but we're starting, we're back filming again for Atreyu. Um, part of also doing documentaries, you try and do multiple shoots at once to make the most of the money. So we started filming for Goodfellas when we were out last year. A couple of exciting trips coming up for Atreyu to Berlin and Venice and the States again. So hopefully that'll be out by Christmas. Um, and then there's a few other life afters that are in the works that hopefully I can announce in the next few months. Okay, and where, where do people need to go to get involved in all of that? lifeaftermovies.com or they can check out the web show youtube channel that's right and you have to i, I you've talked to so many cool people at the web show that you I, people you haven't done documentaries on just cool people i'm yeah i'm pretty excited about it so i mean there are obviously some documentary related because actually one of the pieces of advice when i started the channel was absolutely take advantage of contacts you have so the first slew of videos I did for the web show were people that I was involved with the documentary so like Flash Gordon related Sam Jones Melody Anderson Brian May Brian Blessed then obviously Flight of the Navigator with Joey Kramer and Randall Kleiser and Tim Blaney and Ed Eith and then then I just started reaching out and using contacts and so I people like Keith Coogan and Claudia Wells and Bob Gale and yeah so I'm really excited about it. Uh, that's awesome you have your own playlist here I'll link to that in the description of this video and then maybe there'll be pop-ups and at the end of this uh the end of this episode do we cover everything I feel like I'm forgetting I something think, that we need to no, plug. I think I think it could lead this could lead into a part two conversation hopefully lots of people comment about if they're inspired to do something or want advice or Mm -hmm. I am open and willing to give anyone advice because I was certainly very lucky to have people take the time to do Skype calls and emails to me about how to crowdfund and how to tell a story. And, you know, so I was very lucky. So very happy mm -hmm. to share it. You've been fortunate enough to kind of be mentored by some of the greats. I know Kleiser, Randall Kleiser for you is something of a mentor. And that's such, what an honor, right? I mean, so bizarre, isn't it? I never thought I would see the day, but he was just like to the point that I would send him links and ask him questions. And he'd say, I have some, he wouldn't even assume I would want it. He was so kind. He was, he would email and say, oh, I have some thoughts about the edit and the story. Would you like to hear them? I was like, of course, Mr. Kleiser, I would love to hear them. So he was really great in not only suggesting why, like he would tell me a scene would work better in a certain other place, but he would also explain why it would work and the audience point of view and their journey and what they will get out of it. And so he's a, he's certainly, he was certainly a, a huge part of Navigator, definitely. And that ties into learning by doing too. You, you learn those things as you were making it. So uh, a lot of food for thought, a lot of stuff for conversation here, guys, continue the conversation in the comments below, follow the web show. Uh, there's a link to it at the end of this and down below and uh, check out all these past videos. It's just one of many conversations that Lisa and I have had. Lisa, it's always a joy to talk to you. Always a joy. I doff my cap to the lady and uh, <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much. Take care. Uh, we'll leave this one here for now. Until next time, we will catch you later. Bye. And see. <laughs>